There's actually 303 of these throughout the fort. And that's what it was designed to do, right, is, is, uh, is uh, house guns. Uh, like I said earlier, 420 uh, was what the fort was designed for. Most that ever made it out here, 171, far short of their number. Type of guns, Columbiads, which were also prone to cracking in transit, blowing up during firing. It's a bummer if you're on a gun crew, right? You light it. No, you light it. No, you light it. Um, for this reason, they never put a, a full, full up charge of gunpowder in those, in those weapons. Um, and I'll explain more about that upstairs. Uh, we also had Robin Cannon. Although technically Columbia has cast in an entirely different process, so vastly superior weapons. Uh, and we'll, we'll look at that big one when we get to the top. That's a Robin. Uh, we had flank howitzers in the bastions of the fort and parrot rifles too, like I just pointed out with that rifle bore, right? Um, but a gun you'd typically see in a first tier casemate would be an 8 or a 10 inch uh, uh, Columbia. It would be mounted on a large wrought iron carriage to support its weight, and it would traverse and rotate on two sets of iron rails. And you see the outside set here, inside set right there. That's it, aim the gun out that little window called an embrasure. Right? Uh, that window is only little, though, if nobody's shooting at you. If they are, it starts to grow in size. Right? So the, uh, you guys don't like any of my jokes today. Yeah. <laughs> Struggling all day. Um, the, uh, what's that? They're no good? <laughs> oh. Um, so at any rate, uh, th and this was on the video that I had played uh, on the boat. Uh, Rod, uh, not Rodman, but um, General Joseph Taunton developed the uh, Taunton Shutter. And a uh, very um, advanced uh, defensive uh, design for the fort uh, for its day and age. And what it basically was is a, uh, a, um, a bounce iron shutter mounted to the exterior wall of the fort whose default position is closed. Now how it works is when you fire one of these guns, the gases that initially escape the muzzle are enough to throw the shutter doors open. Cannonball egress is just a fraction of a second later. Once everything passes, those doors rebound and close. All right? And it actually works really well, except for one thing. Iron and salt water don't mix, do they? So over time, they start to rust. Now, the problem is in the building materials here. We talked about uh, the, the brick, the, uh, the, um, the uh, masonry, or the concrete. Uh, the core of this fort is the concrete. The exterior of the facade is brick. So they sandwich these large iron plates in between the two to balance these shutter doors. Well, when they oxidize, they can expand to over 60% of their original size, basically just push the brick right off the wall. Now the core becomes exposed and is degraded by the elements, right? Wind and rain and water and all those things. Um, and that's what that, uh, that um, uh, video also talked about, was the restoration process done to the wall. In fact, just yesterday, we had out the, uh, the uh, mason um, from that video. Uh, and I believe uh, December, he's going to start transporting scaffolding out here, and they're going to start working on that last wall to stabilize it. Okay. Um, now, you can shoot a lot of different things out of a cannon, but in a Civil War fort, it's typically shot or shell. And uh, shell has an explosive charge in it, whether it be time or concussion. And shot's a hunk of iron. It's what we think of as a cannonball. And one of the things you can do with them is utilize the uh, hot shot furnace that I pointed out. The whole design of that thing is to heat it up, turn it into an incendiary device. So once that's done, they bring it over to one of these guns on the first level, just the first level. And the intent is to fire it at a wooden warship. And they'd actually skip the ball across the water, try to hit the ship broadside right at the water line for a couple of different reasons. One, maybe they sink it outright. Two, maybe they hit a powder magazine, cause an explosion. Or three, if nothing else, that cannonball or shot is going to catch anything it touches on fire. They see burn a ship to the water line. Okay? In fact, they would actually not put a full charge in those guns for the reason of not wanting to embed the round too deep in the ship. They want some air around it so the fire would start. Uh, does anybody know why they only use them on first level guns, though? Tra transporting them up? Yeah, who wants to carry a hot cannonball? Yeah. It's terrorist. I mean, it's yeah. hard enough getting it over here. Working as a artilleryman was an extremely dangerous job in those days. It still is, but, but especially in those days. And so, yeah, just getting it over here was a challenge without burning yourself. All right. Now, the building materials at the fort, uh, we said the brick. 16 million is the estimated count out here. Originally gotten from Pensacola, Florida. Uh, but then, this fort remained in Union control throughout the Civil War. There was never any battle to, or engagement to occur. The uh, South never attacked the fort. But also, they wouldn't sell any building materials to them at all, or any materials for that matter. So they had to get their supplier, uh, they had to get a diff uh, different supplier. And so it turned out to be Brewer, Maine, is where the balance of the bricks were shipped down from, all right? Uh, and you can tell, too, the, the difference in the brick. Uh, if you're standing on the outside of the fort and look up, you'll see like a darker, redder band at the top. That's that northern brick. In fact, as a side note, uh, the, um, uh, the uh, Park Service uh, employee, Kelly Clark, who is uh, the lead in terms of the restoration process, uh, she's contracted to get brick from the very same company that they got brick from uh, when they constructed the fort out of Maine. So the company's still in business. So brick making hasn't really changed very much in the past 
800 years or whatever, you know, whatever. So it's been it's pretty big, the same basic process, really. Um, the uh, slate on the floor does a good job at providing a semi-smooth surface for the gun mounts. You also have uh, granite. There's a, a piece of granite here. Acts as a lentil underneath all the embrasures. And how that works is that you'd actually have the carriage with what's called a tongue or an extension that goes underneath that granite. It's pinned at the same distance back in the wall as the embrasure to provide the correct pivot point for the cannon. But we saw a lot of uh, granite as we went through the uh, sally port this morning, and also the stairwells are all granite. Uh, and it's pretty impressive because they did have some stonemasons on site here, but the vast majority of this granite was cut at the quarries to fit, and so just put in place out here. So when you start to look at the tolerances, that really is pretty amazing. Excellent craftsmanship. Uh, the, um, the moat wall that we have, uh, I mentioned it earlier, it completely surrounds the fort at six-tenths of a mile uh, in circumference, and uh, it was designed, uh, most importantly, to stop the erosive effect of wave action on the main wall of the fort. Okay? which it's done a good job of over the years. Also to stop an enemy ship from sailing right up to the wall for it, have a mangle grapple over the top or detonate a charge against the wall, something like that. Now, what they did do as well is pipe sewage lines into the moat, and uh, they didn't think this would be a problem because they had sluice uh, gates in the moat wall adjacent to those sewage lines. They would pull those at low tide and expect the moat to drain out, and then at high tide to be filled with clean water. But this didn't work very well for them because the tidal range of South Florida is only a couple feet. Not nearly enough of a range to affect any type of cleansing action to the moat. So what they were left with in reality was just a stagnant moat filled with sewage. So you can imagine, right? 1860s. I said the garrison out here was 1,500 men. During the Civil War, the number's over 1,800, right? And uh, nice and warm for you, moat filled with sewage. So now it introduces disease uh, to, the, uh, to the troops as well. Plus, it doesn't smell so hot. Um, the, uh, also, the, uh, the fresh water issue. The engineers designed a series of cisterns underneath the fort, 109 of them in fact, one underneath each first tier casemate. How they work is when it rains at the top of the fort, uh, water percolates through the sand and soil into sluice channels that are directed into iron pipes. And those run down through all these columns that you see here. In fact, where you're looking right now, sir, that mini arch, that's a sand filter. So go into the, into the sand filter, percolate through to be purified and end up in a cistern below. Now, uh, this, the problem with that is really twofold. One, it doesn't rain out here nearly enough to either, either fill, fill the cisterns or keep them full. And two, the fort settled on itself. So it cracked all but six of those 109 cisterns. They leach in salt water and now they become non potable, right? You can't drink that. Um, so the, uh, the, the uh, army rushes out large boilers and they set them up on the south beach to start to condense, two large boilers, condense uh, salt water into fresh which when it's working is fine. Uh, however, the supply lines up to the north are pretty stretched out here, uh, and these boilers frequently break down and run out of fuel, uh, so they're never sure when the next ship is going to be in with either parts or fuel, and so they have to store their water in these large vats or cylinders that are kept out in the bright Florida sunshine. You ever have any fresh water sit out around the house at home in the summer? It starts to go green, grow stuff in it, and uh, what's the ideal breeding ground for it? Also the mosquitoes as well. So uh, now we get into the yellow fever. It's just one problem that leads into another. Uh, any questions with any of that stuff? Yes, ma'am. How could they see? Because the shutter didn't go all the way to the top of the opening. There was a gap for them, so they could they could sight the gun. Yeah. And yeah, there's and there's a couple replicas around. What they did is they pulled out all the iron on these five walls and then uh, replaced it with, um, it's uh, like a cast concrete material, but some of them uh, have the shutters closed over, at least one of them, and you can see that there's a gap there. So. Any other questions? Yeah, I have one. Ford sailors and, and army troops with time on their hands, how much graffiti have they found? Gouged in the wow, place? never asked before, and I've done a lot of these tours. Um, they found some, yeah, and, and you have to understand too, it's like, you know, somebody will ask me, well, what's that, like, nick up there in the wall? I don't know. You know, it was, it could have been done when they were out here. Uh, like I said, in the 60s, uh, the Park Service did a lot of things, so it's really hard to say. However, uh, they did find graffiti in some of the areas that, that you're not allowed. For example, in the second tier um, bastions, uh, they have uh, in, inside the uh, magazines in there, uh, they go into the flashlight, and some of the former rangers have told me, yeah, you see people writing on the walls and things like that. Um, a graffiti, if you will, that's permanently etched is uh, um, Captain Good um, uh, put his name in the, um, in the uh, slate right in front of the um, lighthouse, you know, and people, I believe he's just a board lighthouse keeper that decided to etch his name there and it still stands today. Um, Nolan, I believe,
believe is his name. If you go in a second tier bastion, uh, they call it the chapel right up here. Uh, you'll see if you look at one of the bricks at the top of the fort, at the top of the arch, uh, he's put a brick with his name in it. And he's one of the master craftsmen. So you do see that stuff around. Uh, the graffiti, like I said, is kind of hidden in some of those, uh, some of those other. Uh, but, but a really interesting question, actually. Never, never before. Any